Hello and welcome to Euphoria. This channel explores designing, creating and building models for a LEGO city. We'll be exploring the joys and challenges of building official LEGO sets and designing and making modifications and my own creations. In this video I'm going to build the LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts Clock Tower set. I bought this set because I like the look of the building and the parts it contains. Although I'm not a great Harry Potter fan, I think this is a great looking build that could be developed into something else. This video will contain a speed build of most of the set and I'll give you my thoughts on the design and use of parts. I'll also be building this set in a LEGO CAD program so that I have a digital build that I can use in my mock design later. See you later on in this video for details of how I do that. As usual for my builds, I will sort out and lay out the parts before starting so that I'm familiar with the elements used for the build. This is called knolling, and if you want to find out more about it, see my videos on the topic. There's a link in the card above and in the description below. There are six individually numbered bags for this build, and as I'm following the instructions, I'll open them in the required order for the build. The clock tower build contains a useful selection of parts. Of course, they are largely building parts in useful, realistic colours like brick yellow or tan, sand yellow or dark tan, greys and browns. This set is built in three main parts. The Yule Ball scene, this tower which contains the prefect's bathroom and the clock tower itself which has three levels. I'm going to follow the Lego instructions and start by building the Yule Ball scene. So Let's start the build. So we start by building the Yule Ball scene, which is based around this angled module that sits on the side of the build. Firstly, we make these two tables with icicles and table decorations, which are freestanding pieces. This ice sculpture uh, construction is really nice. It's made out of these crystal or transparent pieces but it's quite hard to make because the pieces fit into the circular plate in between the studs rather than on the studs which is actually very fiddly to put together. The main part of this scene is built onto building plates starting with these 45 degree angled plates this is quite an interesting build technique and uses a variety of hinged pieces and angled plates to give it strength. Using plates at different angles gives the build some interesting facets and allows it to be freestanding or be connected at an angle to the other parts of the set. However, it can't be built onto a base plate because the plates are at different angles that won't connect to the base plate. This means that this angle technique is clever, but a bit limiting for use in other builds. This rotating mechanism is clever, but it's a bit clunky. The whole plate has to be rotated, and because the central axis is held in a fixed position, the other parts are made to spin around the axis. It's nice, but actually quite difficult to operate. 
It's an interesting and clever piece of design to represent this scene in the movie, but it is very specific to the movie. I'd find it difficult to use elsewhere, although I would like to use the parts for something. So the second part of the build is the tower and prefect's bathroom. Here I've laid out the parts again from the second bag. There's a clever technique here using a corner plate which is attached to the other building plate using a hinged brick and that allows this part of the build to be attached to the other part and then the position can be adjusted using the hinges. This part using the transparent rods and these golden tap pieces is really nice because it looks like water's flowing out of the tap or faucets. So the top part is connected again with another of these 45 degree angle plates. And then the build's topped off with a conical tower, which is made up of two half cone pieces, which of course look like the outside of the tower from the front, and the inside of the tower from the back. So that's the Yule Ball scene, combined with the Prefect's bathroom, which I think in the movie are two completely separate things, but here they seem to be joined together. There are some nice minifigures in this set if you're into Harry Potter. They're nicely made and very detailed. Personally I think they're again very specific to the movie so they'll be quite hard to use elsewhere. It's interesting that the Harry Potter minifigures have flesh-coloured faces and arms rather than the standard yellow of Lego minifigures. So if you like flesh-coloured minifigures rather than yellow ones, these might be quite useful. So now we're going to make a start on building the clock tower itself with the first or ground floor. It's built on two of these 10 by 6 plates rather than a base plate which gives it an overall footprint of 20 studs by 6 studs. That's quite small compared with a modular building and it's certainly not very deep because of course it's only really half the building, it's showing the front of the building and there's an open back on this side. Now there is a slight extension at the front which makes it a bit bigger but overall it's quite small. So here's the bit that goes on the front that extends the footprint slightly and actually there's a little bit goes in here as well to make it seven deep on this side. So here you can see that although it's quite similar on both sides, it's not completely symmetrical and that gives it a nice organic feel that will ex There's quite a few of these corbel bricks in this build and they're a really nice brick to use if you're trying to make something that's got a slightly classical or perhaps an old fashioned feel. I think they're a really nice brick.
So now we're going to plate the top part of this to form the floor for the second story. This is not really how you do a modular build because with a modular you would want to have a row of tiles around the edge so that you could separate the floors but because this is a doll's house type build with no back you don't really need to be able to remove the floors in order to access the inside so that's why it's all built permanently like this so that's the back view now and that's the front view which is quite nice because you've got this effect of a tower on this side the sort of ecclesiastical arch in the middle gives it an old-fashioned feel combined with the use of these arched windows and the grills instead of glass gives it quite a nice antique feel So now we can start building the second floor, or the first floor if you're British. And unlike a modular building, this is built directly onto the first floor, or the ground floor. So that means that the parts aren't separable and the whole building will be built as one entity. I quite like the effect that's being built up on this corner where it looks almost like a turret on the corner of the building although I can't help wondering if perhaps it would have been better with a conical roof rather than this strange sort of gabled roof with half a point on it. Nevertheless with the different shaped windows, the exposed brickwork, a little bit of detailing and this inset, it does give the impression of an old building that's been perhaps modified or built up over time. It does feel that it's crying out for developing further into the other half of the building. But then of course, when you turn it round, that's the back and there's nothing there. So that would be perhaps a good starting point for a mock to say how could I turn this into a full building with front and the back some interesting techniques here that I want to explore there's another interesting technique going on in this part of the build using these bricks which have two half arches at half stud spacing and that provides quite a nice sort of capital on the top of this column and that will form one of the main supports for the arch which is the main feature of the front of the building.
So now we start building the roof. Actually, it's also the third story of the building. I really like the design of the roof. The stepped gable at the ends of the building is very reminiscent of old buildings in continental Europe. The steep angled gable at the front is as well. In this type of roof, the slope of the roof is actually contained within the walls. The build includes a mechanism for turning the hands of the clock from the back. The hands of the clock are made from the Lego parts for minifigure tools. Although they can be put in different positions, they turn together when you turn the shaft round. The clock face itself is a print in the inside of a 6x6 stud dish that's uh, made in transparent plastic. The print is really nice and crisp and this part is one of the main features of the, of the model when it's built. As you can see, once it's built, you can turn the handle at the back, which directly turns the shaft, driving the hands round at the front. The sides of the build form the stepped gable for the roof, with the ridge board for the roof across the back being supported on a half arch at each side. The roof is a great feature of this set. This type of roof is called a cross gable roof, because it has two gable roof sections that connect together at right angles. I particularly like the internal angles of this roof and the way it's been created in Lego. The roof is made of plates rather than roof or slope bricks. They attach to the building using small plates with a shaft that connect to a plate with a grip on the building. The first set of plates connect at the bottom and lean up to the ridge line of the roof. Actually I built these slightly wrong and had to move the steps over by one stud to fit the second gable roof section. The other angle of the roof is also made of plates that attach to the building using plates with a shaft, but this time they connect at the ridge line and hang down from the top. The two sections of roof fit together very well, and although there's a small gap between them, it isn't really noticeable when you view the model from a distance. Personally, I don't like the studs that are visible on the stepped gable, and I'd like to see these finished off with tile elements to give a smooth top. Now, I'm also going to build this set in LDD, that's Lego Digital Designer, so that I have a digital build that I can use as part of the design for a mock later. I see that LDD doesn't yet have some parts in its parts menu. There's no part for the new gear wheels, one with six teeth and one with ten teeth, or for the 2x2 two two tile with a large hole that acts as a mount and axle for the gears. Nor does it have a part for the top part of the conical roof, or the small plate with plant leaves. So you might ask why I'm using LDD. That's because it's relatively quick and easy to use. But it is a bit annoying that LEGO doesn't support its own program with its own parts. There are other computer-aided design or CAD programs. For example, Studio is a LEGO CAD program produced by Bricklink, and it's a good alternative to LDD. I do also use Studio. Perhaps, surprisingly, it has a much larger selection of parts than LDD, including the missing types from this set. However, I find the very large selection of parts slower to navigate, and so for this video I'm using LDD. Now that Bricklink has been bought by LEGO 
it will be interesting to see what they do with the LDD and studio programs, whether they combine them or somehow keep both going. Because I intend to use the parts from this set for a mock, it will be particularly useful then to have the model built first in LDD. You might also notice that I'm using the extended view in LDD. In this view, all the parts in the parts menu appear red, but you can then choose any color for the parts. I find this quicker than scrolling through every color of every part to find the one that I want. But if you want to make a physical build using real bricks, you then have to be sure to use colours that are actually available. I'm not going to show you the whole build process, I'll just show you the start of the build so you can see how it works. Here's the first part of the build in LDD. So now I've done the same for the rest of the build. I'll save this away as an LDD file that I can use later when designing a mock using these components. It's also relatively easy to import from LDD into Studio. Some of the parts don't translate very well and Studio shows them as wireframes when it has an issue. But most of the model comes across fine and it's fairly easy to replace those parts that do have a problem. I hope that LEGO makes this process a bit smoother now that they own BrickLink. In a later video, I should be able to show you importing this set into another build to make a mock. So that's my exploration of building the clock tower from the Harry Potter series. In my opinion, it's a nice looking set with some attractive features. It's particularly good looking from the front. It's okay from the back if you want to play with the set. It doesn't form a full building as it has an open back, but this gives it good play value. I think it would make the basis for a great mock, and that's the reason I got this set. I'll probably be making it into something larger, so I'll probably want to construct this on a larger base plate rather than a set of building plates. The set contains a useful selection of parts that I want to use for a mock. Building this set has given me a useful insight into how these parts fit together and some ideas about how to use them in a mock. What do you think about this set? What would you do with it? Please let me know in the comments below. Look out for another video in which I will be designing and building a mock using the parts from this set. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos about LEGO modular buildings.